from the heart of Fort Lauderdale, Jacqueline St. James with gay news around the world. Good evening, welcome to Gay News Around the World. I'm Jacqueline St. James. Today is Monday, November 25th, 2013. In world news, the Church of England has announced it will work with Stonewall to tackle homophobic bullying in its schools. Stonewall said that the church had started discussions earlier in the autumn, and while Britain's largest gay rights charity had not agreed with the church's opposition to civil partnerships and equal marriage, on the subject of homophobic bullying, they were both on the same side. In July, the Archbishop of Canterbury said that he would specifically target homophobic bullying in Church of England schools. The Most Reverend Justin Welby made the comments as part of his first speech to the Archbishop of Canterbury. He admitted that the church's opposition to equal marriage had been utterly overwhelmed by passage of the Marriage Same-Sex Couples Act. While the church continues to oppose marriage equally, Archbishop Welby stated the importance of building bridges with gay people to ensure what we do and say demonstrates the lavish of love of God to all of us. His predecessor, Dr. Rowan Williams, admitted in August that he regularly questioned whether he had let gay and lesbian people down during his time in post. In October, Dr. Williams went further in his remarks and said the church has to put its hands up and say our attitude towards gay people has at times been appallingly violent. Even now, it can be unconsciously patronizing and demeaning. In June 2012, Ben Summerskill, chief executive of Stonewall, accused the Church of England of a masterclass in melodramatic scaremongering, scaremongering as it warned of grave implications for society if same-sex marriage was legalized. Yesterday, Stonewall launched its new campaign to tackle homophobic language in schools with the slogan, Gay, let's get over it. In U.S. news, actor Alec Baldwin has been suspended from his MSNBC talk show after hurling anti-gay abuse against a New York photographer. The former 30 Rock star was approached by paparazzi on Thursday where he was caught on camera calling one photographer a cocksucking fag. In a statement published on MSNBC's website, Baldwin said that he would like to address the comments that he made this past week. I did not intend to hurt or offend anyone with my choice of words, but clearly I have, and for that I'm deeply sorry. Words are important, I understand that, and will choose mine with great care going forward. What I said and did this week as I was trying to protect my family was offensive and unacceptable. Behavior like this undermines hard-fought rights that I vigorously support. I understand up late will be taken off the schedule for tonight and next week. I want to apologize to my loyal fans and to my colleagues at MSNBC, both for my actions and for distracting from their good work. Again, Please accept my apology. A video of the incident was posted on TMZ, which showed the actor shouting, Get away from my wife and baby with the camera. After chasing one photographer away, he then walks back to his car before shouting the anti-gay slurs. slurs. Following the incident, the LGBT advocacy group GLAD condemned Baldwin on his pattern of anti-gay slurs. Spokesman Richard Fierro said that Mr. Baldwin can't lend his support for equality on paper while degrading gay people in practice. It's clearly time he listens to the calls from so many LGBT people and allies to end this pattern of anti-gay slurs. Later he backtracked, issuing a more placated and formal series of tweets in which he eventually cornered himself and apologized for using the term cocksucker, which he claims he was not aware was an anti-gay slur. And I will get it right eventually. Slur. Anti-gay slurs are wrong. They not only offend, but threaten hard-fought tolerance of LGBT rights. I'm grateful to all the people I meet and hear from who recognize that I would never say something to offend my friends in the gay community. Rich Fierro from GLAAD informed me that cocksucker is an anti-gay epithet, in which I case I apologize and will retire it from my vocabulary. In June, Glad gave Baldwin the benefit of the doubt after he apologized again in an open letter calling a Daily Mail writer a toxic little queen. My ill-advised attack on George Stark of the Daily Mail had absolutely nothing to do with issues of anyone's sexual orientation. My anger was directed at Mr. Stark for lying and disseminating libelous information about my wife and her conduct at our friend's funeral service. As someone who fights against homophobia, I apologize. 
In a series of tweets, Baldwin abused Mr. Stark, urging the followers to straighten out this fucking little bitch. In local news, well, Club Boom is hosting its monthly Studio 54 event. However, this one is a little on the dark side. This month's event will be a special night, Saturday, November 30th, with their tribute to Studio 54's Leather Fetish Night. Enjoy a hot night of disco dancing with me, joining you on the main floor. Dance the night away to the hot hits of our sexy disco god, DJ Richie Rich. It will be a night of hot, sensuous men in leather gear. Awesome drinks by your fabulous bartenders. Awesome music. And as much disco dancing as you can stand. Again, at Club Boom, November 30th, starting at 9 p.m. And remember, this is a Studio 54 costume party and a fetish gear party. It's Studio 54 night, so almost anything goes. I'll see you there. Well, this wraps things up. I do hope that you have a great week. And remember to be out, be proud, and be gay. For Gay News Around the World, I'm Jacqueline St. James. Have a great evening.